All right, we should begin. We got the sign. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our SIG SED sessions today. And the topic is forging a stronger bond between SED and Kubernetes. My name is Wenjia from Google. Uh, I am one of the SED project maintainers. And uh, now I'm uh, a co-chair of SIG SED. And it's my pleasure to have uh, Merrick and James to co-speak with me. Um, Merrick, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, uh, I'm Mark Sharkovich. I'm, uh, I've been an etcd maintainer for the last two years. And with the creation of the SIG, uh, I'm the tech lead for, uh, for it. I'm very happy to have you here. Thanks, Merrick. Hey, team. Uh, so my name's James Blair. I work at Red Hat, uh, and I'm a reviewer for etcd along uh, with a uh, co-chair for um, SIG etcd as well with Wenjia. That's me. All right. Now let's get into our agenda. Uh, today we'll first start with sharing a great news about SD. Uh, like we haven't mentioned SIG SD millions of times. Um, and then uh, Merrick will give us a deep dive about the API contract between Kubernetes and SD. Uh, James, followed by that, um, uh, James will give us a detailed introduction of the new community model and the recent SD releases, features, announcements. Um, we'll close this talk by providing a list of SED uh, opportunities or, or uh, activities here, right, um, at KubeCon. And then we'll open up for questions. So um, it's been many years, actually almost close to a decade now, that SED had been playing a very critical role in Kubernetes. Uh, SED is the data store for uh, configuration data, uh, status data, metadata for in Kubernetes control plane. So if we take a quick look at the brief history of Kubernetes, back in 2013, that's like actually a decade ago, um, the very first SED PR was committed to the SED repo. And then very uh, soon after that, we had uh, SCD v0.2 released. At the time, Kubernetes is at 0.4 release. And baby Kubernetes adopted baby SCD already. Then we released um, version uh, 2.0, and then we rewrite the API, released v3. And when time comes to 2018, in KubeCon Seattle on a rainy day, SCD was officially accepted by CNCF as an incubating project. And there, we were all getting together with the founder of SCD, uh, maintainers of SCD, um, to celebrate that moment. And then two years after, uh, 2020, um, SCD moved to graduated level as a CNCF project. And yes, SCD is a pandemic graduate. We can blame all the data inconsistency to that. And then, three years later, um, March this year, Hong Kong and Merrick proposed a case of making SED a special interest group in Kubernetes. And um, it took a little while to finalize all the details, but we did it um, on September 12th. That was when SED officially became a special interest group in Kubernetes. And we have the blog post on both SCD and Kubernetes website. Um, you can go to the link and find more details. And here's when you should clap. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so um, in the new SIG, we uh, adopt the Kubernetes governments governance, and um, James and I are honored to serve as a chair of the SIG, and Merrick and Benjamin Wong from VMWall are the tech leads, leads. So why do we do that? The goal was very clearly um, defined in the charter and vision. Uh, we do want to build the best production data store for building cloud-native distributed system, like Kubernetes. And, uh, we aim to have the most reliable distributed key value store that is simple to maintain and scales for Kubernetes and beyond. Well, uh, how do we do that? In another word, 
what change does SIG SED bring to the community? From the Kubernetes perspective, SIG SED represent, uh, from SED perspective, SIG SED represent the SED interest in the Kubernetes community. And from the Kubernetes perspective, now uh, SED adopting Kubernetes government would make it easy to delegate the decision making to SIG SED. And also we, adopt, we will adopt the consistent process from Kubernetes like CAPS and PR reviews that will bring the SED code base to the next level, um, the quality of the code base to the next level. And then we will leverage the Kubernetes release machinery, security responses, and all that. So going forward, um, there will be continuous investment on some ongoing uh, works. And then there are also some new initiatives um, associated with SIG SED. So to name a few, we will continue building the robustness test to avoid data inconsistency. And we will codify the API contract between Kubernetes and SED. And we will continue work on the downgrade story, recovery from the backups. Um, and we are actually um, planning to provide um, the atomics to extend SED past current dimensions. Um, and thanks to Hong, now we have a working prototype, actually. Um, what I do want to emphasize the most now is that without the community, without um, you guys working with us, it will be really, really difficult to get any of this down or to get any of this down in the speed that we want. So um, special interest group is not a magic. Nothing automatically get better just because we are sick now. Um, it is definitely a great milestone, but it's um, more of a start of a greater journey ahead of us. And we are all in this to make a difference. So how do we get involved? Uh, we do have weekly SED meetings, um, alternating between community meeting and bug triage meeting like some of the other six. And um, we have various channel for off offline conversations. We do have an ongoing mentorship program. Uh, we cannot add any more people anymore, but we are aiming to provide opportunities like this more in the future. So uh, stay tuned. And you can find the information in the SED.io community. If you cannot find that, please submit a PR to fix the website. Um, with that, I will give it to Merrick. Yeah, thanks, Winja. So I would now want to go uh, more deeply into the Kubernetes etcd contract. Um, <clears> the <throat> reason is that even though the projects have been for a really, really long time uh, present, the contract itself was never well, well defined, and there are still a lot of gaps and correctness things that we could improve, leading to better performance and better, uh, <clears throat> better resulting uh, community by allowing uh, further extension um, of Kubernetes uh, CRD, uh, allowing better extension and better performance of Kubernetes. So uh, API machinery of, in Kubernetes is pretty complicated. You may start your, start your journey on simple kubectl get or create and learn about uh, the reconciliation loop, but this is really just a <laughs> tip of the iceberg. Uh, the, the, the most of the work to make uh, Kubernetes more, more performant and scale better is done on the direct bottom uh, on the, the end. Uh, and we have seen a huge improvement in performance because of this. Uh, like there is two, the two on the bottom we watch uh, watch list and consistent cache reads will really reimagine the performance that we can reach, but uh, it makes things uh, pretty complicated. So to, to, to be sure that the uh, whole system behaves correctly, you need to understand each and every layer. And we have made some historical mistakes here. Uh, no single person knows, uh, is aware of every uh, of everything, 
and uh, history, like we have documented cases where Kubernetes just got it wrong. But uh, yeah, so starting from the top, uh, Kubernetes uses uh, leases to manage events, and those events, uh, so to, to, for events to have a limited time, time um, spent, uh, we assign to, uh, to events a lease, which after some time will delete the event. But the problem that uh, it, it creates is that Kubernetes, for performance reason, Kubernetes assigns multiple, uh, uh, multiple keys or events to the lease. And this breaks uh, Kubernetes watch because uh, when lease is expires and events are deleted, they're all deleted in single transaction. And this uh, leading to multiple revisions pointing to same, same delete event. And this uh, never happens normally in Kubernetes and breaks the assumptions built by the watch. So even as of now, Kubernetes, you, when you are watching Kubernetes events, the, 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 the protocol can have errors and miss some, um, you, can, you can miss some events or, or delete events. Uh, so it's, it's something that full community um, or community is aware of and we are working uh, about the fix, but uh, no one spotted it for a very, very long time. Uh, second, uh, etcd wanted to do a performance improvement and how to best improve, uh, uh, how to best improve a list request when you need to when you have pagination is stop looking at all the, the uh, look, stop looking at the all objects in the list and skip the limit, uh, but the, or use the limit and skip all, reading all the object, but this uh, broke Kubernetes uh, remaining items count feature, which allows uh, clients to know how many objects are still left in etcd to be read after multiple page requests. And unfortunately, we only caught it after etcd release. Um, and the, the third was uh, etcd watch, uh, watch notification implementation. So for watch to be performant uh, for resources that don't get very uh, updated very often, we sent notification about how events are, prog uh, how resource version is progressing to, the, to those watchers, so that when they disconnect, they will get uh, much, uh, instead of like reading from very, very long uh, revision, they will be up to, more up to date. And this unfortunately was broken and uh, very, um, in, broken uh, by allowing a race uh, between an event and watch notification update. Uh, so uh, we, to, for Kubernetes to really optimize watch and move to the second step, we, we need this to, 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 to work. Um, around, so the, the story begins with etcd data inconsistencies that really looked, um, made us look into how, um, how we can test and validate the uh, correctness of uh, correctness of the API, so it's not about uh, simple requests going into etcd and getting a response. It's about like whole whole distributed system providing the guarantees that uh, that we would expect. And testing this is very complicated. So uh, even etcd has done it wrong, and with release 3.5, we had a couple of those issues, and this motivated a full effort to build a a uh, robustness framework, which up to date, uh, which uh, can take any generic traffic, any etcd setup, uh, and even inject failures into specific places of the code base, or simulate any network failure. And uh, we can take all this uh, history of, or uh, all this experiment, co collect all the events, and then validate them for correctness. Uh, allowing us to find not only like react to bugs or react to failures, we can proactively discover and hunt for the new uh, new e issues. Uh, that way, protecting uh, protecting the project before discovery. And this made us look into the Kubernetes etcd contract, 
because where to if you're validating correctness and trying to explore the whole space of how you can use API, uh, the best way to start is from, uh, from um, exactly how your most uh, popular user uh, or your most popular users are using the API. So uh, we, <coughs> when uh, investigating uh, Kubernetes, uh, uh, how Kubernetes uh, uses etcd, we found that no single person was aware of all the behaviors and all the details were hard to find because they're old co uh, code base and the code uh, is spread around. So we uh, did a full collaboration of creating a, a, a document that uh, everyone could put in their, uh, their, uh, their ideas and their thoughts and we compiled it in uh, and make it public and available. Uh, two interesting things that we discovered is we formalized the, how Kubernetes uh, sharding works. If you didn't know, you can, uh, uh, Kubernetes doesn't need to run on a single etcd. You can delegate each resource to a, a separate, uh, to a separate uh, etcd instance or, or a cluster. And this was never like really defined how it works, why it works. So we tried to get it right and made it, uh, made community, make everyone aware of it so community can utilize it because some people were using it for a very long time and mo but most of the community was not aware of this. Second one is what bo uh, bookmarks. Uh, we, <coughs> Uh, when the feature was implemented, we had some intention how it should work, but it was never like really written down and tested for. Uh, so by defining this this guarantee, we we uh, could uh, write specific tests or ver verification logic that allowed us to find uh, multiple issues with it. Uh, what are the results? We discovered that watch in a network partition. Uh, can travel back in time. So if there was uh, a long enough, uh, long enough time for etcd member uh, to be disconnected from a cluster so that it will uh, not catch up by changes but request a snapshot, we found that the, the um, uh, recover or applying the snapshot will, not re uh, will reset the watch and sometimes the snapshot can be older than the member, uh, <coughs> where the member has already, uh, where it was before, leading to the watch jumping back in time. So that was a totally surprising uh, find that required uh, a, a very detailed definition of watch guarantees and how it behaves and then writing a dedicated code that can validate those guarantees. Uh, second, we discovered a duplicated event. Uh, but, uh, it mostly goes into uh, etcd client uh, logic for resetting uh, or retrying to get a, a, a watch stream. So if there is a network failure, etcd has some logic to, uh, uh, to try again and restore the stream. And we found that there was, in some specific case, off by one error. Um, yeah, so with the, the contract defined and the testing available, we are uh, looking f uh, into the future to make it really, uh, make the contract be uh, something really solid and well tested. Uh, we are still missing a couple of things that are harder to implement from the contract. For example, compaction, uh, because uh, compaction at CD cuts the history, uh, making uh, validation of it a little bit harder. So uh, uh, we are still, um, we still need some work on that. Um, we have a lot of uh, failure conditions. Uh, like uh, network uh, partition, like uh, uh, like panics, like uh, like delay in requests or delay in specific place of draft. Uh, but we need to do more. For example, uh, we are really interested in utilizing the um, 
uh, utilizing the library for injecting disk failures, so to, to be able to inject any arbitrary disk failure uh, and see how etcd uh, really responds. Like we technically know how it should respond. We we have some hopes that it will do that, but we like no one ever tested it. So let's find out uh, how how to to be able to announce everyone that yes, we are testing and every change will, and any bug will not pass uh, our review, uh, reviewers. And going further outside of uh, etcd, uh, by defining a contract, we can implement a fake implementation. It means that instead of uh, when Kubernetes tests uh, run its own tests, it talks to etcd, uh, real etcd, but, uh, and this limits what we can like, val validate. But if we had a fake that behaves like etcd, we can then bring it to Kubernetes uh, 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 testing framework and replace it with it and cross-validate whether etcd, uh, Kubernetes works the same as on the fake and versus the real thing and see if there is any inconsistencies. And then we can do our, an arbitrary changes in the fake to find, like it's called mutative testing, to ver verify if something would change in the etcd implementation, would it break Kubernetes contract? Uh, thus solidifying what we know that is a guarantee that might stand versus what is not. And uh, the last thing is uh, validating the, the Kubernetes storage layer. So Kubernetes has pretty, like I, I described, the code for, that is used to define contract is very spread around, if, uh, and it makes testing pretty hard. If we, could, uh, if we could bring the same testing by, like instead of testing everything on etcd layer, test it on full Kubernetes layer, and then validate that Kubernetes uh, uh, Kubernetes behavior or an API server behavior, we should be able to prove and solidify uh, solidify the, the the contract on the or correct correctness uh, or our assumption about correctness of Kubernetes even more, and then be sure that whatever performance uh, optimization we do will not cause any correctness issue, allowing us to really. Uh, go beyond in that. Uh, and that's all uh, about the etcd Kubernetes contract. Let me go to James. Thanks, Merrick. So to kind of round out the story of uh, closer integration between Kubernetes and etcd, uh, we have to talk about the humans. We have to talk about the, the, the community. So uh, fundamentally, the, the way we uh, approach community membership directly impacts how our community can grow. Uh, so with that in mind, um, and taking on all of the kind of lessons from Kubernetes where we can, uh, in April this year, we formally adopted a new membership model. So loosely based on the Kubernetes membership model, uh, one of the big changes there was the new member role. So sort of like that first rung on the ladder uh, when you're sort of interested in getting into contributing to a project. Uh, and we've also sort of clarified and uh, tidied up the um, roles and responsibilities for reviewer and maintainer as well. And if we just have a quick look at the requirements for that member role, uh, they're up on the screen there, they are really straightforward team. So, um, you know, just where we're deliberately vague about multiple contributions, we haven't put a number there, uh, and essentially, as long as you've got some PRs merged, uh, and you've been involved maybe in, in issues, perhaps, uh, or contributing to discussions, um, you just need some sponsorship from a maintainer or a couple of reviewers, and just like Kubernetes with Kubernetes slash org, where you open up a, an issue to, to add yourself as a member, we now have a, a similar process there for etcds. So, the, uh, that entry level rung is now there, and for anyone that's um, really keen to get involved in the project, I really invite you to, to take that up. Uh, jumping forward, so I just want to highlight a couple of, couple of numbers. So um, there's sort of a historic trend on how the etcd project, you know, total contributions um, by month have looked, 
and we're, uh, we're pretty, pretty stoked to report things are going in a pretty positive direction uh, of, of late, um, over the last sort of year and a bit. So uh, let's hope that that continues, and, and we'd love to have you adding to those, uh, adding to those numbers and, and joining the team. Uh, looking at PR engagement, so let's say you propose a change to etcd. Uh, if we were back in July 2021, uh, you were waiting maybe almost a week to even get a first comment on that PR, which is, uh, it's not too flash. Um, but as you can see, we've, uh, we've been pretty hard at work and uh, the, the team are doing a great job getting that down. So we're, we're pretty happy about that. Um, jumping forward, so quick results. Uh, we've had this new model for six months now. Uh, we've got seven new members uh, in the team and we've got two new reviewers from those members so that the progression is working. Um, it's, uh, it's been awesome. So we've also now got, um, thanks to Wengir and the team, the mentoring program underway with the first cohort started. Uh, so just know that um, there's going to be future iterations of that program and it's another way to, to help kind of get over those hurdles of, uh, of understanding the, the deep complexities of both Etsy and, and Kubernetes and, and contributing. Jumping forward, so, so very quickly, that kind of rounds out the story there. We'll have a look at some recent releases uh, and some of the features. So since Amsterdam, uh, we've had three patch releases for our 3.5 you know, stable release branch, and same for 3.4. I think we've got another 3.4 patch release coming out very shortly, yeah. So uh, as Merrick was mentioning, robustness testing is a huge focus for us. Uh, if anyone was paying attention, there's actually a data inconsistency between Merrick's slide and my slide as well in terms of the, the numbers up on the screen, but uh, we've added some more features there. So we've now got support for LazyFS, which is a fuse-based uh, file system that allows us to, as Merrick was talking about, inject disk failures. We now need to actually pick up on that feature and, and start um, adding a lot of uh, instances of using it. Um, We've now got Kubernetes-specific traffic generation for those robustness tests, so we can kind of model what Kubernetes would look like when it interacts with, uh, with etcd in these tests. And we've got um, some more network uh, failure injection happening, which is, which is awesome. Uh, another big one, so if I rewind, it was just a couple of months ago, we announced tier one support for ARM64. So there was a fair bit of work kind of wrangling tests and workflows and trying to get equivalence between AMD64 and ARM64. Uh, so for anyone in the audience that is running your clusters on ARM, uh, you, you've got a little more, you, you can sleep easier at night now. Um, so uh, funnily enough, we, uh, as part of this, we kind of rewrote a whole bunch of documentation and kind of strengthened a bunch, bunch of things. And then shortly after, uh, had to throw that all away after we moved, moved from static ARM64 CI to on-demand uh, uh, runners, so yeah, good times. Um, lastly, uh, gRPC, so we've done a migration from gRPC Gateway V1 to V2, huge bit of work, and, and the team uh, did a great job with that, so this kind of simplifies the dependency tree for Kubernetes and etcd, uh, got us off a deprecated uh, Gateway version, um, uh, sort of unblocked our updates for open telemetry, uh, and gRPC itself, and that was a pretty big roadmap item for 3.6, our next minor, like, next minor release. So that was awesome. Uh, very quickly, there is the summarized view of the roadmap for 3.6. Um, you can see we've got a few uh, in the completed column already, which is awesome. Uh, but as you can see, still plenty to do. So we, we need all the help we can get, uh, and there's, there's issues that kind of walk through this, and the roadmap is on GitHub. Uh, if anyone is keen to kind of take a closer look at what those involve. So to finish off, uh, we've got a couple of things still happening at KubeCon. So tomorrow, uh, we've got a couple of talks. Now, unfortunately, they are at the exact same time. Uh, so, so you'll have to pick one if you're keen to learn a little bit more about etcd. Maybe I'm biased, but we've got a maintainer talk here from Merrick on secrets of running etcd. So for any cluster operators in the room, that, uh, that'll be the one for you. And we've got the booth. So uh, in the uh, top right-hand corner of the solution showcase, we've got the etcd project booth in the project pavilion. So we're staffing that full-time. Uh, come and hang out and, and ask questions if you're, uh, if you're curious on anything. 
And just very quickly, after KubeCon finishes, we've got the uh, SIG etcd Slack channel in Kubernetes uh, Slack. Um, we've obviously got the, the GitHub link there and the mailing list, so you can reach out to us there. And with that, I think we have uh, almost perfectly five minutes for questions. So if anyone has anything on their mind, uh, take it away. Looks I feel like, like this is already answered, but <clears throat> is the plan still to stick with Beeble for the foreseeable future? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so there is ideas to re replace Beeble uh, as part of the proposed vision for the project because uh, we want to play to add these trends, which for now, like storage was not historically great. We adapted a project that was uh, somewhat deprecated and it both costs, like we are bound to that now to the process of maintaining it. So it caused a lot of uh, maintenance. It requires ma maintainer involvement and we are not as necessarily specialists. So we want to play to etcd strengths, which is watch and re uh, reliable uh, replication by Raft and possibly think about making, opening the, the, the door and making, instead of extending, replacing full etcd, ex, uh, replacing the storage layer, thus uh, opening the idea of larger class or uh, larger storage and larger, maybe sharded etcd, or much larger sizes and maybe multi-tenant etcd. Maybe just to add one very quick thing to that. So there's been a bit of discussion about whether or not uh, you sort of have an interface for Kubernetes itself in terms of the storage layer, right? And I think rather than throwing the uh, the baby out with the bathwater, um, as Merrick says, stick to the strengths of etcd around distributed consensus and just you know have an interface at that lower level for the underlying storage. Yeah. Thank you. Then one other follow-up yeah. question: uh, How solidified? is the interface with Kubernetes at this point. Are there a lot of uh, feature additions in the pipeline? Uh, so the con, like we, we are work, we have a document that describes all the behaviors that we expect. We have, uh, and we are working on defining a, uh, a full uh, in Golang interface that we could, would be owned by etcd et project, but would be used to ensure that we um, solid, have, have it solidified that we know when some, there is a new change that we, how we extend and uh, any extension is properly tested and ver verified. Um, I know what, uh, what was the last part of the, I, I guess more simply, are there any major breaking changes in the pipeline? Breaking changes? Yes. No, no, no breaking, like breaking changes, the, the main thing we will never, until, uh, as long as there is version three, we will not break. It's mostly about utilizing, better utilizing watch and better utilizing uh, watch bookmarking to make, uh, to make Kubernetes watch cache better, uh, ser uh, work better and serve more traffic instead of always getting, going to, uh, to etcd. So there will be, as, of, like, at, as long as there is version three, there will be no breaking changes. Kubernetes is really strict about this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just to add to your uh, Beeble thing, uh, the part that I talk about, about the extensibility, that's actually, we do, we do have a prototype that building the interface between SCD and Bboat. So basically, hopefully, we can swap w w the Bboat with other um, with other things. There is a working prototype with uh, SQLite underneath. So um, we don't have enough people to work on it because we have a list of other priorities. But if you're interested or anyone here is interested, it's, it, it's a very interesting project to work on. And yeah. Hello. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for the effort on ARM support. Um, since it became a tier one support, 
I'm from OKE, which is Oracle Cloud. We started rolling out HCD clusters on ARM, and they are doing great so far, and we are slowly rolling out across the regions. Uh, regarding the uh, API layer uh, between Kubernetes and HCD, maybe I missed your point earlier. So is it intended to have additional implementation just like HCD, because now it's tightly uh, Once you formalize the interface between Kubernetes and HCD, there can be additional implementations, maybe Postgres, or is that one of the intentions of formalizing the interface? Uh, no, I can quickly respond because we are out of time. Uh, no, the API machinery in Kubernetes is really strict. Uh, our goal is not to replace etcd. It's uh, be, like the reason is as long as we have etcd as a perform performance goal, we c everyone is in the same bucket that we need to, we can optimize Kubernetes really for etcd and having an alternative uh, implementation would bring more harm to Kubernetes by, by sharding the community too much. So that's why we are thinking about which layer to do that and uh, it, it doesn't seem like, at least for Kubernetes perspective, that uh, the whole Kubernetes etcd replacement is, uh, would be helpful. Thank you. Thanks for your contributions. Okay, team. With that, I think we're out of time. Uh, huge thanks for everyone to, uh, for, for coming along. Uh, great to see you all here. Thanks. Thank you.